So yeah, this is the first time I've filled an entire sketchbook. Um, especially this one's kind of big too. I counted and it's 122 sheets of paper, so 244-ish pages, depending on how you count your pages, I guess. Um, the sketchbook itself, it's this nice sort of brown paper bag craft color. Um, I unfortunately don't have an ID on it if you are looking for something similar. Um, I bought it at Walmart several years ago and it doesn't have any branding or identifying features at all on it and when I bought it it was on clearance for like three dollars and I've never seen anything similar available there the few times that I've looked since. Um, fortunately for, for me I have one backup um, so I can use that later. You can see kind of how roughed up the finished one is compared to how it started out, which is kind of fun to see. Um, but yeah, if you know of any other sketchbooks like this that are toned paper, either brown or gray or whatever, um, let me know in the comments because I really enjoyed it and um, I want to use more in the future. I think I probably should use some white paper sketchbook too just to sort of not get into a rut, I guess, but I really like this. Um, stickers on the front. This little raccoon and these little colors here are from Lee Ellickson. And then this sort of magical juice box is from Art by Angie. And I think this little frog might be from Angie as well, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm sorry if I'm misidentifying it or if I forgot. The rest of them are just from like random sticker sheets from the dollar store or whatever. Um, you gotta have a metallic dinosaur. Um, let's see here. So I actually started this book in 2017, as you can see. Um, so the first couple of pages in here are from six years ago now, and I abandoned it pretty quickly. Um, I kind of, throughout my life, have always abandoned the sketchbook pretty quickly. You know, when you start a new one, it's very exciting, and then, you know, for whatever reason, you fall off or get intimidated or lose it or whatever. But um, this 2017 was kind of the start of a time in my life where I was getting, like, really overwhelmed with my job at the time, and then there was some stuff going on in my family, and I just didn't have any energy left over, and so I just kind of dropped art altogether to be honest but um last year's when I started coming back that's when I started again so yeah the first couple of pages are old so it's interesting to see like for me anyway how similar and in some cases how dissimilar some of my uh sketching is compared to then but like I said, there was a huge gap, so it wasn't like there was a huge progression in between because I wasn't actually drawing. <laughs> and that was the last one. Yeah, that was the last one until February 2022. So that's when I started again in earnest. Um, and just, it was really consistent when I started sketching every day. I tried to make it a goal. But then of course, you know, as time goes on, you get busy and you know fall out of routine and there's some gaps later on um but as you can see i started with cats just really love drawing cats mostly <laughs> my main interest i guess you could say um i don't know if i'm gonna have a lot of in-depth stuff to say about each page i'm sure there's some notable stuff in there but uh let's just look at it Majority of stuff in here um, is all referenced. There's some stuff that I just kind of doodled, but it's mostly all referenced um, and typically images I found on Pinterest. I know Pinterest is kind of bad. It's kind of bad. It's a bad place to find image reference to use 
in general just due to you know image stealing and reposting and lack of attribution and so i think it's something you really need to be aware of if you're using any images you find on pinterest for reference for i don't know what i call big art <laughs> art that you're you know finished pieces anything you're considering selling for sure but i don't know for like sketchbook and just practicing i think it's probably okay to use random images on pinterest i don't know sometimes i worry about it um so let me know what you think there's a lot of fish in here i don't know i just really I really love drawing the profile of a fish, I suppose. Here's Bean again. There's several beans in here. That's one of my cats. She's in the front too. You can see a few times in this book, I kind of made a very tiny, timid attempt to start trying to figure out landscapes. Um, it's something I've become more interested in recently and I've never really given them an honest go. Um, they're very intimidating to me as, you know, someone who really just draws like animal portraits, frankly, trying to jump into something like a landscape with like full background and lighting and all that sort of stuff, um, is pretty intimidating, but Throughout the past year or so, like, especially working in this sketchbook and doing the 100 cat paintings, like, I've really learned to be not so intimidated <laughs> by trying to do art. It's honestly been one of my bigger hurdles throughout my life, and I guess it's related to perfectionism. Just being so afraid that you're gonna make a bad painting that you just don't even start or you know just sort of the feeling of doing something poorly even though it's your first time doing it is so embarrassing that you're just not even willing to try i don't know it's something i think all of us need to get over and some of us get over it sooner than others and i'm just starting to anyway this is when I started getting the inspiration to do the 100 cat paintings project. Um, I started just sort of browsing pet finder for cute cats to draw. I was doing them in here and then I was like why don't I expand this idea a little bit further because I wanted to get back into painting and it's what I wanted to paint. Another sort of little like, look, I'm I'm doing a background. <laughs> really, I am. I really like this pigeon. I was doing a lot of little um sort of like still lifes, I guess, too. Faces. Plants. I'd really love, I, there's so many artists that do such beautiful like flower and plant drawings and again it's just something I'm really not practiced in so I just gotta practice more. I'm proud of myself that there's only a few pages with this in here. This is basically when I drew something that was so upsetting to me to look at because it was so bad. <laughs> that I just had to cover it and start over. And I think that's okay to do. If you wanna do that, you can let yourself do that. But I also really want to do like a whole sketchbook of just whatever, just being really messy and sort of ugly and not worrying about anything looking good. Just maybe even just like scribbling and mark making. Cause I think, that could be really good for me. Some little doodles. These little doodles are in the period of time when I wasn't drawing or painting at all. These are, this is what I did. I just drew these doodles. So did a page of them in here. Um, there's a few pages in here that are prompts for my nephew. <laughs> he wanted a pink car. So I tried.
as you can see, there are a lot of cats. More pigeons. This page was from, uh, I asked for sketching prompts on Instagram. So that's why there's kind of a random assortment here. If you didn't know that wombats poop in cues, Google it, look it up, they do. More goldfish. I really love goldfish. I'd love to get some, but ever since I learned that they really shouldn't live in a small tank, like a single goldfish, I think should have like, I don't know, minimum of 20 or 30 gallons or something. And I just, I don't have space for a tank that big. But yeah, I don't even want to get like a betta fish anymore. Cause you know, back in the day, they're like, oh, betta fish can just live in a bowl. No, it really shouldn't. It should have a big old tank. These are, yeah, so there aren't a lot of these, but I did sort of pre-sketch some of the cat paintings and you'll see a few of those in here. Maybe I'll put the final painting up on the screen when I edit this. Another pre-sketch. Dinosaurs, kind of. Here's Pigeon, my other cat. Here's Fat Fat Panko Cat from Instagram. You should follow her. You should follow a lot of famous Instagram cats just for good times. This was a sketch for um, a Draw This In Your Style challenge on Instagram. I should try to do more of those. Bean again. I think this is where I started getting a little looser and more messy in here. I started putting paint in here because I realized the paper could handle it. More sketches for the cat paintings. Decided to swatch out some uh, crayons for some reason. There's not a lot of like human faces in the sketchbook. It's something I'm very uh, unpractice and kind of afraid to draw. <laughs> Um, I keep saying that a lot. It's like, if you think about how silly that is to be afraid to draw something, but, um, you know, I don't know. It's the perfectionism thing again. So, you know, I thought I'd give it a go. I think they're fine, but they definitely aren't a good likeness. Like I wouldn't say they look truly like the models that I drew. Um, so I, I want to explore that more in the future, hopefully. Another nephew prompt. He wanted oh, the microphones in the way. A cat on a bullet train. So that's what he got. Those are his two main interests. Well, cats might be third. I think it's trains. And then um, the Untitled Goose Game. And then maybe other video games, and then cats, but he does love cats, it's very sweet. I keep coming back to horses. I used to draw a lot of horses when I was younger and I used to feel very confident doing so. Hel hello? Can I help? Come here. That's Bean, by the way. Um, but then I kind of lost it, you know? Drawing is a lot like 
it's not like riding a bike, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like, it's, you know, it's kind of like lifting weights or something. Like, if you don't draw for a long time, you, you forget how. <laughs> and so I think that's been part of my struggle throughout my, like, entire lifelong art journey is that I take so much time off that uh, I don't really progress in the way that I daydream about I suppose but now that I've been more consistent I do feel you know like I'm getting more confident and I am enjoying it more so just gotta keep doing it more this dear unicorn this was a skin I don't know if you've heard this before but I, I hear it every once in a while but people um, I've seen people suggest that like if you're having trouble drawing something and sort of drawing what you see instead of what you think you see is to like flip your reference image upside down and draw everything upside down that way you don't try to outthink it and so i don't know i don't know how well it turned out not a huge fan but again i'm just i need a lot more practice I actually quite like this drawing. I don't know, but again, I don't think I don't think this drawing looks much like the little girl in the picture that I drew this off of, but I think it does look like a person. So there's success in that. like this little guy poking in the corner. I really like how the markers worked out for me on this little crow sketch. I think it's a crow. Um, most of the time in the sketchbook when you see markers like this, they are just, um, I don't have one sitting here, but they're uh, zebra midliner markers. I really like those. Um, and then there's sometimes like, some of these thicker paint pins are Posca pins and then I have some thinner, just sort of cheap paint pens. Um, not sure of the brand. I think this drawing turned out well. I like that. And also, <laughs> I don't know, well, maybe I didn't do all of them, but you know, if you're drawing a horse, why not make it a unicorn? Why not? I think I've lost this red pin, which kind of upsets me because it looks nice. I wish I knew where it was. Just have to buy a new one. Tiger. Have I ever seen a horse before? Maybe no. Maybe no. These paints um, are like glow-in-the-dark paints from Five Below, so they're not really great. I don't think I ended up using them. another page where I apparently covered some stuff up and started over, but I think I like the page in the end. Another tiger. Apparently this was a very frustrating day, kind of gave up on that tiger there. That's something I um, had to work with with this sketchbook because I guess I was like, I want it to look nice. And so when I was having a bad day like that, I had a hard time just sort of moving on and turning the page. Um, but like, that's the whole point of a sketchbook. If you have a bad page, you can just move on. You don't have to salvage it. Like, 
Who cares? Do you care? Do you care? Comment below if you care that I drew a bad page. <laughs> or don't. Don't hurt my feelings, but... <laughs> do whatever you want. I like this page too. when I was testing um, to see which of my paints would allow me to draw over top of pencils. Do some more drawing with just like a ballpoint pen. It's so nice sometimes. This was for Star Wars Day. <laughs> May the 4th of this year, I think. Yeah, and then like so the end, end part of the book, this was May 4th, and then it's now like the end of September, so kind of um, off and on throughout the end of this year. It's a little tiny drawing for my nephew up here. Train. Bean and Pidge. This one's not my cat, that's just a cat. My nephew drew this cat. <laughs> He always, I, he has a very specific formula down. He's like, cats have a rectangle body and a circle head and triangle ears and a long tail. And that's how he draws them every time. And I just, I love it. Tiger. Look at this whole page with paint on it. More Star Wars stuff, cause I was just, you know, in a Star Wars mood. If you want to translate all this uh, Arabesh, you don't win a prize, but you can if you want. A couple dogs, and then immediately back to my comfort zone of a cat. Fish. Unicorns. It's a nice colorful page. Need to practice drawing swords too, I guess. More tigies. It's a fun page. I really enjoy this like turquoise paint pen, as you can see. And that's the last one. Being a page again. Well, I mean, there's that, but I don't count the back page as a page, if I'm allowed. Um, so yeah, I started started the sketchbook with a little bean, ended with a little bean. She's sitting over there staring at me right now because she's upset that I'm in here doing this instead of sitting on the couch with her. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's the end. Moving forward, um, I have this second sketchbook like this that I'll probably start working in. Um, but then I also have this giant sketchbook doesn't even fit in the frame of this video um, that I wanna use as my like ugly sketchbook and just get real nasty in there and never use a reference and just make a mess. Um, really excited to do some work like that. And then I have a little guy that I'm hoping to start off with. I really wanna do the 100 head challenge and draw like 100 portraits of people um, just to try to get that into my wheelhouse because it's something I'm really not comfortable doing and it's something I want to get more comfortable doing. So if I learned anything from doing the hundred cat paintings, you just gotta do a hundred of something and then you'll feel better about it. So I'm gonna try doing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're here at the end of the video, thanks so much for sticking around. I'm feeling really appreciative of all the feedback I got on the 100 cat paintings video. 
Um, I'm just really appreciative of any feedback and support in general. I didn't expect that video to get as much attention as it did. Um, so yeah, I'm just really excited to be working on art again after kind of a really <laughs> bleak period in my life when I didn't work on any art at all. Um, I'm excited to be learning and creating. So I don't know. Thank you for watching me do that, I guess. Um, and I hope you're having a great day. And if you're not, I hope it gets better. Um, you know, maybe just get yourself some tea or some coffee or a glass of water and just sit down by yourself and take your times for yourself. We'll get better. But you're probably having an okay day because most days are okay. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know how to end the video. Bye. <laughs>